Hey there, welcome to the TonalTrends.com Spotter Stats Blog. This video is called BPMs Musicians Use Most. In this video, we'll be taking a look at what tempos people use the most or the least when writing pop songs. All right, first let me talk about how I sample this data. If you don't care about that and you're just anxious to see the results, you can skip ahead. I won't be offended. Okay, first, what did I sample? Well, the short answer is pop songs. Um, mostly songs from Rolling Stone Magazine's Greatest 500 list. And then also some more modern pop tunes, mostly ones that my students have asked me to teach them over the years. Um, so yeah, pop songs, not classical and not a lot of jazz. Mostly top 40 type hits and other songs that critics have felt to be important to the modern pop canon lexicon bunch. All in all, the total number of song tempos for the upcoming graph uh, tallied up to be 553 tempos sampled. Okay, the next most important thing to note is that all tempos sampled were rounded up or down to even numbers. Mainly I did this because after a while you realize that humans tend not to be robots and so you end up having to round up or down in the first place. And also I just think it makes the sampling a little more comprehensive um, and true to what we're trying to do here. For the tempos that were in fact robot computer click tracked at solid odd tempos, I rounded up a point. Next, you should know that for a couple songs with two tempos, I counted them as two separate samples. I split them. Um, so what I mean is, you know, I didn't like make those tempos worth half as much uh, within the overall average or some crazy math like that. Okay, so a little bit of rounding and splitting is all fine and well, but what do you do when songs fluctuate more than just a couple of BPMs, but not enough to where it could be considered two different tempos? For instance, the Beatles' Can't Buy Me Love comes out of the gate at a punk rock 180, but drops down 10 whole BPMs to 170 over the course of two minutes. Well, all you can do then is take the average. So yeah, 170, 180, I just call that around 176. Uh, though sometimes you just have to let them go. Like the end of the door song, The End, that fluctuates from about 110 to 240 BPMs. That's a gradual speed up of well more than double. So yeah, just let that one go. The average of that isn't going to be any kind of help to anyone trying to spot the tonal trance. Or like Heroin by the Velvet Underground, uh, that song never even claims a solid tempo, going anywhere from 70 to 158, um, and all the tempos in between there throughout seven minutes of a song. So yeah, in the interest of posterity, I'm gonna leave that one blank too. Oh, also when averaging, you gotta allow for a little subjectivity. Like if after listening to a song, I had a bias towards where I felt they'd locked in for most of the time and it was different than the average, I'd usually split the difference. Um, and you know, we're only talking a couple of BPMs here usually. Um, and in that case, you know, it's okay to claim spotter's prerogative. Speaking of subjectivity and prerogative, let's talk about compound meters, like 6-8, 12 any kind of eight. Question is, should we record their tempos uh, by eighth notes, like, you know, like da, 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 um, or should we do it by their dotted quarters, like da, do, do, da, do, do, da, do, da. Well, I found the answer to that lies in the question, how do you move to it? How do you dance to it? How do you tap to it, sway to it? And when you think of it this way, most of the time, you're going to end up leaving the triplets out of the equation. So yeah, word of the wise lots of slower BPMs are going to be compound meters. Um, okay, well, that's enough preambling. Let's go look at the charts. Hey guys, welcome to my computer. All right, the range of samples, as you can see, is from 46 BPMs from the song Do Right Woman, Do Right Man by Aretha Franklin, up to 238 BPMs. And that's from Graceland uh, by Paul Simon. I should say about that one, as with most songs up to the 200s, up in the 200s range, it was kind of a 64 decision to not feel and count it in halftime. Um, what went out was the, you know, the rock and roll backbeat. The two and four was going at 238, and that was good enough for me. Okay, now this isn't to say that songs can't be or feel faster or slower than these tempos here, just that they didn't make the cut for the study if they're out there. I mean, if you want to know, the slowest song I ever heard was Angel by Sarah McLachlan. Um, that's like the Puppies Are Dying song from the television. You know that one. That one clocks in at a computer click steady 39 BPMs. Um, and yes, it's in compound meter. Or maybe dog pound meter. I'm sorry, that was really bad. Um, the fastest song I ever heard 
uh, well, that I've ever even heard of was 1,000 by Mopi, which goes up to, you guessed it, 1,000 BPMs. But really, once you get up that far, I mean, it might as well be a million BPMs. It's all just going to sound like, you know, Rambo shooting triple bullets at a candy cane waterfall. You know, just crazy stuff, like blah, 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 blah. Um, anyways, let's get up on over this hump. Okay, we got our first little spike in tempo use at 60 and 62 BPMs. Next spike is at 74 BPMs. Pretty big one indeed. And then we dip back down and come back up 10 BPMs later at 84. Then it goes back down a bit and hovers just a little while, just under 1.5% of songs, um, before spiking way up to 100 BPMs. Then we drop down almost two whole percentage points before reaching our peak tempo usage around 110. And then our winner up here, right above 110, is 112. 112 weighing in at a hefty 3.6% of sampled songs. Okay, now we're at the top. Let me just pause a minute to talk about this other study my uncle told me about. A couple years ago, researchers at the University of Toronto in Freie Universität, uh, Berlin, examined the top 40 songs on Billboard magazine's end of the year Hot 100 chart from the last five years of every decade starting in 1965. I don't know why they didn't do the first five years of those decades too, but maybe the guy they put in charge of those years' temple was like, got addicted to Tetris, or mur murdered by pirates or something. Um, and so they had to just make do with what they had. I don't know. Anyways, between 1965 and 1969, the average tempo of all songs was slightly more than 116 beats per minute, somewhere in here. And in 2005-2009, the average tempo had dropped to 100 BPMs, right around here. So yeah, just wanted to share that info with you. Not only because that study lines up pretty dang well with this study, but also because it lends credence to the theory that, hey, maybe there are actually certain tempos people like to hear more than others. And if you want to check out that study, um, the link to the article uh, is in the transcript of this video at tonaltrans.com if you're not already there. Though you should know that that link just goes to an article about the study. If you want to read the study itself, you got to buy it. I think it's like 35 bucks or something. And if that's too expensive, you can ask for it for your birthday. That's what I'm doing. Um, okay, moving on. 118 and 120 are kicking some butt. Then the last of the super much used temples up here on the mountain range is 128 BPMs. And then it just plummets. Just uh, down into this weird gap around 144 BPMs. Not sure what that's all about. But I do know that 144 is the largest Fibonacci number to also be a square, like 12 times 12 at the end of the times table. So maybe Dan Brown could write like a Da Vinci Code novel about why this crazy drop off happened. I don't know. Anyways, after that little conspiracy, we have another little tiny mountain range. Well, it's like a hill range with peaks at 150, 156, 166, and 176. And then we kind of just drop off into the barn burners, no man's land, where only the fleet of foot, articulate of tongue, and nimble of finger dare to tread. So yeah, that's it for this blog. Hope you enjoyed our comprehensive study of the tempos musicians use the most. We'll see you next time here at tonaltrends.com music blog. Nobody likes 144. 12 times 12, get out the door. Nobody likes 144. 12 times 12, get out the door. Mm -mm, nobody likes you. In the arms of the puppy, compound meters are slow.